Hey, what's going on? In today's video, we're going to talk five personal finance tips that will transform your future guaranteed. Stay tuned. Hey, what's up? I want to make this video real quick. Last night we had some trainees over and we got on the topic of personal finances and I wanted to share with you some of the advice that I gave them. Number one, live on less than you earn. I know some people that make over a million dollars a year and at the end of the year they have the same amount of money in their bank account as the person who makes $70,000 a year. Now I understand a lot of times it happens slowly but those little things add up. Like out of college, you're making $30,000 a year and instead of going to a nice steakhouse because you can't afford it, you go to Taco Bell. You make forty-five, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 the next year and instead of Taco Bell, you're going to La Taqueria and instead of $14, it's $64. Those are the little things that add up. And then we get a more expensive car, we go on more expensive vacations, we buy nicer clothes. These are things, little things, that we waste our money on as time goes on. And so be careful of that, be disciplined, but make sure that your expenses are not equal to or greater than the income coming in because then you're gonna be in a very bad financial situation. Tip number two. Get a three to six month savings set aside in an area that is not easily accessible so it is not in your checking or your savings account. I'm a fan of Dave Ramsey and some of the things he teaches and his first step in the program is to put a $1,000 savings fund, an emergency fund away. If you don't have $1,000 set aside, then we got some real issues. Do not pass go, do not collect $200. That is the first thing that you need to do. So no going out to eat, no vacations. You have to create that $1,000 emergency fund. Then once we get that set aside, we need to parlay that into creating a three to six month saving fund. So you need to know what your expenses are and you need to have at least three months of that. That's especially important for times like this. With this coronavirus thing going on, I've seen so many people stressed out and frustrated because of their financial situation that if they had three to six month set aside of living expenses, it wouldn't create that same level of stress. Even if they lost their job, they know that they got time where they're not so stressed about how am I gonna put food on the table? How am I gonna pay for rent this month? So make sure that you are diligent and it might take some sacrifices. Again, instead of going out to eat, you might have to change and eat in. Instead of cable, you might need to cancel that for Netflix until you get this done. But these are important things that if you sacrifice, it's going to create a more financial secure blanket for you and it's gonna help you long-term, especially if you create this as a consistent way of doing things. The next thing with credit cards, be disciplined with that as well. It's easy to rack up um, those credit cards. I know my first credit card, I had to learn the hard way, so this is one of the reasons why I'm making this video so you don't make that same mistake. If you are not able to afford it in cash, then don't buy it. There's no sense in paying 15 to 30% more on your purchase just because you wanted some reward points or it's something that you could have waited for. That's why that emergency fund is there is because if you really do need it, you can tap into that emergency fund. But don't use your credit cards if you're not going to be paying them off at the end of the month. And don't give me that you're doing it for rewards. It doesn't add up when you look at the pros and cons unless you're paying it off at the end of the month. Next piece of advice that I can give you is to track your income, your expenses, track your net worth on an ongoing basis, at minimum every quarter, but for those that are more dedicated, I would do it every month. It creates your awareness and your focus on what's going on and how you're spending your money. So you can look this stuff up on Google, you can find other um, 
places where they can give you kind of a template. But for me and my Excel sheet, I have assets and liabilities. I have expenses and income, and I'm tracking that on a monthly basis so I can see that I'm moving forward and progressing. Now, at first it was painful. And for you guys, it might be painful as well. You might not want to look at it, but when you start to see it month over month improving, it just creates this energy. The other thing that I would add on top of that is to set goals, however small or big, set goals. And if you have a significant other or a spouse, get them involved with you. When my wife and I were getting married, we didn't have somebody helping us financially on the wedding. And so we created this thermometer of what we wanted to save for the wedding. And we started filling it out as we put money into this savings account aside. And as we saw it start filling out, it created this, this synergy and this excitement. And so we started picking up little side jobs. We started selling things and we started dumping more money into that just so it could fill up faster. The last piece of advice that I can give you is to continually invest in knowledge and read books and uh, listen to podcasts, find people who are more financially successful than you are and start learning from them. You don't have to take all of the advice. Like Dave Ramsey, I'm a fan of, again, a lot of the things that he teaches. I'm not a fan of cutting up the credit cards that he teaches. Uh, I'm not a fan of paying everything in cash. Like this house, for him, he can buy a whole subdivision in cash, but he can't get a loan to buy a house. Because he doesn't have any loans out, he doesn't have any credit history, he doesn't have a credit score, so the bank doesn't see him as being credit worthy. And that's something that is important. I want to be able to use OPM. What is OPM? It is other people's money. It allows you to leverage your efforts that you have saved up. So for me, I can buy a $500,000 house with only having $100,000. It allows me to leverage five times my money. I cannot do that with stocks. I can't buy $500,000 worth of stock with only $100,000. Same thing with Grant Cardone. I'm a fan of some of the things he teaches. He tells you not to invest and buy your own home because it doesn't bring you in revenue. Now, I would rather for me, pay my own mortgage off than rather pay off someone else's mortgage. I've also seen my home value increase for all of the homes that I've had, and it has allowed me to parlay into other investments. We've refinanced it, and that has we've taken that and bought another rental property. So for me, I'm, again, a fan of some of the things that Grant Cardone teaches, but not everything. So Continue to invest in yourself, continue to invest in your knowledge, and create your own formula that works for you. I hope this message has found you well. I hope you have found value in these pieces of advice. Again, those five pieces of advice are one, to live on less than you earn, two, to have a three to six month savings set aside, three, pay off your credit cards at the end of the month, four, track your information so you can see the progress with those goals that you set, and five, make sure that you're continuing to invest in knowledge and invest in yourself. If you do those five things, I can promise you it will pay off in dividends that you can't even imagine. Albert Einstein says the most powerful thing in the universe is compound interest. And this will create that compound interest effect. And the more consistent and diligent you are of doing these things, it will happen that much faster for you to have financial success. Let me know what your thoughts were and which piece of advice was your favorite. If you have others that we didn't talk about today, leave them in the comments section below. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. God bless. Be great.